in the heart of London, near the Houses of Parliament, stands the Abbey Church of Westminster. For centuries, the scene of pomp and pageantry, solemn ritual, and worldwide rejoicing. Here, every reigning British sovereign for almost 900 years, from William the Norman to King George VI, has been crowned within a few yards of the spot where lies the dust of the great abbey's founder, Edward the Confessor. Here, illustrious Englishmen from every sphere of life are buried. Sovereigns, statesmen, warriors, poets, scientists, musicians. The story of Westminster Abbey tells the history of Britain. The seclusion of Dean's Yard, where once ran the stream that turned the Abbey Mill, is reached through an entrance from the main thoroughfare. Here is an atmosphere of peace and quiet, away from the din and bustle of modern times. Above can be seen the rose window of the transept and the flying buttresses of the nave, while beyond, the great towers over the west entrance stand out against the sky. Passing through Dean's Yard, with Dean's Court on the left, we enter the cloisters. and legend declare that as far back as the 7th century, the Church of St. Peter stood on this spot, then an island between the River Thames and the marshes which now form the water of St. James's Park. Some 300 years later, when the old church had begun to decay, Edward the Confessor, seen here on this old mural painting, later restored in the form of a tapestry, decided to rebuild. This was to be the largest church at that time in the form of a cross. We find curious representations in the Bayeux tapestry of this church, in which Harold was crowned in 1066, followed on Christmas Day in the same year by William the Conqueror, and around which much of England's history came into being. In the undercroft are the remains of the original foundations and the most ancient fabric of the present abbey. Leaving the cloisters, we enter the abbey. The choir, seen here from the transept, was part of the rebuilding contributed by Henry III and has remained unaltered to this day. Here, for the past 800 years, voices have been raised in hymns of praise.
the aisle of the nave stands a portrait of Richard II, who began the building of the nave, the highest in England. The work of its reconstruction was carried on intermittently for 150 years. Down the centre of the nave, feet pass over the graves of great soldiers on one side, engineers and architects on the other, and in between, that of David Livingstone, the explorer who discovered the Victoria Falls. Many people from distant lands visit the Abbey when a customary request is, tell me, where do I find the Poet's Corner? Poet's Corner, straight on, turn to the right. That leads us to the south transept, and here the walls are rich with tablets and monuments erected to the memory of famous poets, writers and musicians, names that have become household words. Look, William Shakespeare, and above him, Southey and Burns, to the left, the poet Campbell, among others, Gay, Milton, Spencer, and Ben Jonson, the dramatist, and here, the tomb from which the Poet's Corner derives the origin of its peculiar glory, Geoffrey Chaucer, father of English poets. Every nook and corner sacred to a thousand memories, and on the threshold, a bust of Longfellow, the American poet. To the west of the high altar is the north transept known as Statesman's Isle. Here are the graves of Pitt, Fox and Gladstone and the statues of Disraeli, Gladstone and Peel. Here is the monument to General Wolfe and just beyond in the north aisle the Nightingale Monument in white marble. Behind the high altar rests the founder of the abbey, Edward the Confessor. This is his tomb. On the north side of the Confessor's chapel is the stately tomb of King Henry III, the royal builder who inspired the present edifice. In the year 1240, Henry demolished the eastern portion of the Norman church in order to build a shrine more worthy of the founder placing his remains in this embellished tomb. Approaching from the South Ambulatory, the tomb of Richard II and his first wife, Anne of Bohemia, is seen to occupy the south side of Edward the Confessor's chapel. Nearby is the tomb of Edward III, father of the Black Prince. Around the tomb are bronze images of his children. Passing the chapel from the South Ambulatory, we see the ancient screen carved with legends of the life of the Confessor. And here is the tomb of Queen Eleanor, first wife of Edward I. Over the tomb is an effigy cast in one piece from gilt bronze. In her honour, crosses were erected at spots where her funeral cortege halted on its journey from Grantham to Westminster. The last of these is that at Charing, giving us the well-known name of Charing Cross. We move among the tombs of kings. Beneath our feet 
lie the mortal remains of queens and princes. For many years, all building in the abbey ceased until the time of Henry VII, who made a lavish contribution in the form of a chapel. It was begun in 1503 and is recognized as the most imposing addition to the abbey. Behind the altar is the tomb of Henry and his wife Elizabeth of York. Surrounded by a bronze screen, the tomb is of black marble surmounted with bronze effigies. The side aisles of the chapel contain tombs of historic interest. Here in the north aisle is the recumbent effigy of Queen Elizabeth, whose coffin rests on that of her half-sister, Queen Mary. In the south aisle, corresponding in style with that of her kinswoman, is the tomb of Mary, Queen of Scots. Her husband, Darnley, was father of King James VI of Scotland, who became James I of England, thus uniting the thrones of England and Scotland in 1603. Stalls are reserved in the chapel for knights of the Order of the Bath, and above, their banners adorn the walls. Many great names, including that of the Duke of Wellington, are among them. The most noticeable feature of the chapel is its ornamental roof, with its carved pendants and lace-like tracery. It's considered to be one of the finest examples of its kind in the world.
songs of praise may pass into oblivion, but the pageantry of a thousand years lives on. Westminster Abbey stands in silent tribute to the past. In a vault beneath the nave lies a British warrior unknown by name or rank. They buried him among the kings. Today, the Abbey stands as a symbol of the future and plays its part in the most solemn and resplendent of all occasions, the coronation of a king and queen. Long live their majesties, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> 